Hello everyone, my name is Natalia Lauk and I'd like to welcome all of you to my solo recital, Russian Piano Masterpieces. Thank you so much for coming, thank you so much for finding time, I really appreciate it. Before the recital starts, I'd like to talk a little bit about why I decided to put together this recital and uh, what is this music about, basically, so to give you better understanding of this music. To explain why I'm playing this recital and why I put into preparation of this recital approximately thousands of hours of work, um, I've got to tell some of the, my background. I'm Russian, I was born and raised in Siberia, uh, where I studied piano for 16 years, and both of my parents are pianists, actually. Um, but after I received my master degree back in Russia, I had to quit piano because uh, you can provide for family by giving lessons. Uh, and I haven't played piano uh, for 11 years. When I moved to the United States four years ago, specifically to Pocatello, Idaho four years ago, I started playing piano again, and I introduced myself to music community here, specifically to ISU music department. And um, uh, I felt so welcome and appreciated here that I decided, okay, I've got to pay back somehow. And how? I don't have much money. I can only pay back with my skills with playing piano. That's one of the reasons for this recital. Second reason would be to start a scholarship fund for pre-college students who are taking piano lessons with ISU Preparatory Piano Program. Uh, for those who are taking music seriously and who dedicates a lot of time, um, piano lessons could be quite expensive. So I'd like to help those kids on their way to professional career. Now I'd like to introduce music you're going to hear in the first half of this recital. It's Russian music written in 18th, 19th, and 23rd century. First piece is by composer Ivan Prach. He was actually Czech, but he moved to Russia because he was so fascinated by its culture. And he loved uh, Russian singing culture, and he gathered and collected uh, 300 Russian songs, and he put them in a book. And this book was republished many, many times, and a lot of Russian composers, really, really big names, they were borrowing those things, those songs from this book for their composition. So his influence on Russian uh, music was quite big first piece I'm playing, it wasn't actually written for modern piano, because modern piano didn't exist back then. None of those great features, for example, metal frame, or double repetition mechanism, which allows us to repeat notes very, very fast. Uh, none of this existed. But even with this old piano, musicians uh, were managing to be virtuosic, so this uh, sonata is quite virtuosic, as you can see. It's so that's first part called Allegro Espressivo, which means fast with expression, and second part called Rondo, and it has some Russian sing-song-like theme you will hear. It's adorable. It's Second piece belongs to Tchaikovsky, who is well known and loved here in the United States. It was really heartwarming for me to learn that uh, he is really appreciated here. Uh, the piece I'm going to play called Dumka. Dumka, if you translate it freely from Russian, means thought. And uh, uh, Russian thoughts are not that usually happy and light, so that's why this piece starts with pretty sorrowful melody. Sorrowful but beautiful. In the middle of this uh, music you will hear the contrast, the great and fast dance. But this dance, uh, it's not entirely happy because usually 
Russians are dancing to forget something horrible that happened. Um, that's why the third sorrowful theme comes back in more stark, dark, and uh, sad quality than before at the end of this piece. Sorrow and joy are two big parts of Russian soul, Russian heart. Uh, I'd like to illustrate it with this picture. One interesting fact about Dumka, it's mandatory piece for all participants in famous uh, Tchaikovsky piano competition, which is understandable because it's an ultimate test if you understand, if you really understand Russian music, if you really understand Russian soul. Third piece called Seven Mazurkas, and it belongs to modern Siberian composer uh, Valery Lapitsky. It was written in 2005, which is pretty recent. Those seven mazurkas are really, really short. Uh, the, the entire cycle takes probably eight minutes to play through. So one piece is approximately just one minute. So you will hear and see this change of moods through those seven pieces. Interesting fact about those names for those mazurkas, they actually weren't assigned by composer, but when he brought uh, those pieces to my father, my father uh, decided to name all of them, not just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, he decided to assign those program names and well, once he told composer that he actually thinks this is Mephisto Mazurka, this is uh, Sorrowful Mazurka, this one is uh, Rustic, and this one is uh, Dumka, uh, composer was actually so stunned and he agreed immediately. He thought it was a brilliant idea, it worked really well with those pieces. Otherwise they would be just called one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which probably not as interesting. I hope this little talk will help you to understand this music a little bit better. And uh, now I'm just gonna play all those pieces I've been talking about. <laughs> 